Hello everyone. So as you guys know, because I've been mentioning it, I'm in the middle of packing to move. So this these dishes that I've been making lately have been kind of just quick dishes. Um because I'm not gonna go grocery shopping prior to the move. So what I'm trying to do is use less amounts of everything to get us through like the next 10 to 12 days. So what I'll be making today, I'm going to be using some butt country style ribs as a meat over a pasta. It's going to be pretty interesting. And as usual, I'll come back and forth as the steps are completed. But just wanted to let you know what I'm making. And that it may seem a little unconventional, but this is what you do when you're using what's in your house. Talk to you in a little bit. Okay, so I'm back and if you can see I took my knife and I kind of serrated the meat But it's still connected At the bottom because until it's cooked it's not tender enough to cut it all the way through So what I'm going to be doing now is seasoning it and layering it for flavor And then I'm going to cover it with some foil and put it in the oven to slow cook for a while So I'm going to be using onion Some thyme little bit of baby leeks that I have left also some regular leeks I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic this is minced garlic you can use fresh too and I'm gonna add the rest of the peppers and then for seasoning I'm gonna be using Morton seasoned salt some Tony saturans a little bit of paprika and believe it or not a little bit of Kodiak Kodak salmon rub it has flavors in it that actually taste good on everything. You don't have to use it just on fish. And also some plain salt. So I'm going to get all this prepared and then I'm gonna come back and show you a quick video of what it looks like. Okay, so we're back. I just wanna show you this. Of course, I'm not gonna put it in the oven on this plastic tray, but you see I've built all the flavors. You look around the edges, you'll see the olive oil. So it's doused in olive oil, then it has all the seasonings that I mentioned and all the vegetables. And all these things are gonna work together as we slow cook this meat to build the layers of flavor. It is going to be so good. And just so you understand, this is the base of the sauce. This will become the base of the sauce. All right guys, I'll be back in a while. So just to give you a quick understanding of what I'm doing just a little better, because this is going to be a process. It's like building something. So you saw already how I'm making the base or the meat to give the flavor and the necessary fattiness to the sauce. What's going to happen once that's done slow cooking, I'm going to let that slow cook for like an hour and a half, possibly two hours, depending on how tender I feel it is. It's going to go then as long as it all fit into my slow cooker i had a larger one which had many more functions but the lid on that one broke so after i move i'll have to get another one because i really hate using the smaller one unless i'm just making rice but what we're going to do is put that into the smaller one if it all fits if we won't we'll move it to my large wok pan and then we're going to slow cook and simmer our tomato based sauce, which I will show you all how I construct when I come back. And lastly, then we'll add the pasta. See you soon. So we're just coming to check on the meat. And it is not as well done as I'd like. Well, we don't want it well done, but it's not nearly as done as we'd like before we add it to our sauce. So I'm going to show it to you real quick, and then I'm going to let it probably sit for like another hour before I move it over to the pressure cooker. So here's what we got so far. <clears throat> let me just show you. So if you look, you can still see it's pretty pink. Now needless to say, you don't want your pork meat too well done because it gets tough, but you definitely don't want it this rare either. So before I add it to the tomato sauce mixture, I am going to be letting this sit for like another hour. Then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna move it to the pot 
Again, we're praying it all fits, but I'm going to wash my large wok out now in case it doesn't because I'm already looking at it and I'm thinking that might be the best way to go. So I'll be back once this is ready. Again, probably going to take like another hour or so before it's to the level of cook that I want before I add it to what's going to become the sauce simmer. So I'm back early because I thought about it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm on like autopilot and not really thinking and I'm glad I caught this before I completed my cooking. So because it's going to cook also in the sauce and we don't want the meat to get tough, I'm going to go ahead and take it out now. It should be well done enough now for me to put it in the sauce. So in a few minutes, I will return and I'll show you what it looks like in the pot as it's preparing to simmer. All right, so... Here we go. I'm about to begin stirring this just to mix it up. Then I'm going to turn the heat on. So what we have here is some tomato paste. We have all the meat, which has now been chopped up into individual pieces. We have peppers, garlic. We have a tomato chutney, which I made the other day. If you don't know what chutney is, think of it as like a jam, only it's savory. Um, and so we're just going to mix this all up in the pot and then we're going and if you hear those noises in the back those are my children who are supposed to be quiet while they hear me filming but at any rate we're going to mix all this up um and we're going to let it simmer for a while i've seasoned it <laughs> excuse me yeah i've seasoned it you hear me sneeze it <laughs> i apologize um but yeah so look at this it's beautiful right look at all of the colors look at all the colors this is absolutely amazing and it's going to taste even better i'm not sure if i'm be able to get the pasta in the same pot so we may have to make it in a separate one but i'm about to cover this let it do its thing for a while and i'll be back oh i do want to mention one thing I always add wine to my sauces, whether it be a Chardonnay or a Cabernet. I added Cabernet to this sauce, and you let it cook down, and it cooks the alcohol content down. You can also flambe it on certain things if you're using, like, hard liquors, like bourbon and stuff. But for wine sauces, wine-based sauces, I find really just cooking it slow cooks the um, wine taste down, and you really don't taste it if you do it correctly. So, like I said, I'll be back in a while. And so here we have the finished product. You can even see the steam coming off of it. I'm sure it's going to taste delicious. Enjoy. <laughs> 